Okay, we're back at the tip of the Mara here. We have a machlok to Rebbe Kiva and Rebbe Tarfa in the case where they measured a mikvah. The mikvah originally had 40 saw. It became deficient. In the interim, somebody went to the mikvah and he, can't, he was in touch with Tyrus. So the question is, what exactly was his state? When he went to the mikvah, was the mikvah a complete mikvah? And therefore, he, his state, his status is Torah. Well, we say no. There's a chance that when he went to the mikvah, as today we find it deficient, maybe when he immersed himself, the mikvah wasn't a kosher mikvah. So if that's the case, it did nothing for him. So whatever he was involved in, he contaminated. So Reb Tarpin says the mikvah has a cheskis chazok meikoro, has a cheskis taro, and chazok rules the mikvah was kosher. Therefore, the immersion was a valid immersion. Therefore, everything retains its status of Torah. Rekiva says, I disagree with you. That because since he himself personally has a cheskis tumah, he also has a presumed status of tummy, and that is also a question. Therefore, everything he came in contact with is tummy. So Reb Tarpin says, but he says, I'll, I'll prove it to you that I'm, I'm right, that if you had a person who was a Kohen, and he officiates, and later it's found out that he's a Ben Grusha Ben Chalutza, he's a Cholo, so he's really, he's not a kosher Kohen. Ta'aloch is, if you find out later, although initially you weren't aware that he wasn't a kosher Kohen, his avoda is valid. So similarly here, since initially the mikveh had a status, and we believe the mikveh to be a valid mikveh, and we only find out later, therefore the mikveh retains its status. Okay, that, that, that's what so Rav Kiva says, I disagree. He says, I wouldn't compare it to Ben Grush Mechavutza, I would compare it to a Kohen who has a blemish, who has a mum. And he does the avoda, and you find out later he has the blemish, he has the mum, this defect. So if he has the defect today, the defect existed then. He says, everybody agrees that that vote is possible. It's not valid. So Reb Kiva says, so Reb Tafra says, I compare it to the Ben Grusha Mechavutza. You compare it to the Mum. If, it, if, it's, if the case of Mikvah is analogous to your case, then I agree with you. I acquiesce. I retract my position. It's tummy. But if the case of the Mikvah is more comparable, is analogous to the case of Ben Grusha Mechavutza, then the ruling should be Tor. So Reb Kiva says, okay, let's see. Who, the case of Mikvah, what is it more comparable to? The Ben Grusha Mechavutza or the case of Baumum. Okay, that's where in the Gemara now. No, you can acquire it. Person, you God forbid, loses an eye, uh, loses a limb, whatever it may be. No, before we became aware, before we became aware that he had a mum. No, no, there's not a question. No, 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 there's no question. No question. Yes, yes, definitely. But we only sure. find out later. Definitely. That's not a question, right? Same thing with Ben Grusha Ben Chalutza. Ben Grusha Ben Chalutza. He, 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 he was born. His, he was born of a, of a divorcee. And his father's a Kohen. They're both. Even Reb Kiva would agree. Even Reb Kiva. No, it's better than the Mikvah. It's better than the Mikvah. It's better than the Mikvah. That would be the case of the virgin. When did she lose her virginity? Right? Reb Kiva is only disagreeing because the person has a cheskis tumor. Because you also have a presumed status of tummy. So why are you favoring the presumed status of the mikvah that it's kosher? What about his presumed status that he's tummy initially? Here the man was born, not a, let's say we know fact he was born, he wasn't, he wasn't handicapped. Didn't have any, any deficient physical defects. Now, later we find it. We have, when did it happen? When did it occur? Definitely, we'll have to have to say it happened after the Avodah. After he officiated. Therefore, when he officiated, he wasn't a Balmum. We're not disagreeing. There, there's no question that Avodah is, is valid. The valid Avodah. In that case, everybody would agree it's kosher. It's a valid Avodah. <laughs> Zerus Akosov. Zerus Akosov. We're, we're just now discussing the case of the Tyrus. I mean, that's Tosa's question. But if, that, if we know factually 
the mikvah was deficient was was not forty so when you went to the mikvah. It is the question that everybody was telling me. I mean, that's Tos, that's Tosa's question. Yeah. Reb Tarfin is comparing it to, to Ben Grusha and Chalutza, correct? When we find out he's Ben Grusha Chalutza, that means his mother. Was, that means he was born a Cholu. Yeah. right? He's, and yet that vote is, is valid. So the mikvah should be the same. What do you mean mikvah? If we know factually the mikvah, mikvah wasn't measured properly. <laughs> Wasn't measured, and later it, 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 it comes to light it wasn't measured, and the man went to the mikvah. Is it even a consideration? It was a valid tefillah, not even a consideration. So how could you compare mikvah to the case of Ben Grusha Mechalutza? Definitely not valid. A mikvah was wasn't measured properly. Yeah, but no. Let's say the last time it was measured, it wasn't measured properly. Wait, but you thought it was. And you went to the mikvah believing it was a valid mikvah. And later you find out it was not. He says, well, but when I immersed myself, it wasn't a problem. What do we mean? But factually, he never had 40 so. No, so the same thing here. The, the cholot. That, that's Tosa's question. The cholot means? No, but he's making, he's comparing A to B. It's apples and oranges over here. Reb Tarfin is saying, just as there it, it, we, you follow, you say it's valid because you weren't aware, the same thing should be true by mikvah. Th that's, that's what Reb Tarfin is saying. We're not generalizing it. It's not a generalization. It's, the cases are not comparable. Here, even though factually he was not a qualified Kohen, but since we weren't aware of it, the Xeris HaKosov is, is, is valid. That's a Xeris HaKosov. Okay, good. But let's say factually the mikvah, when he immersed himself, did not have 40 so. Factually, but I wasn't aware of it. Later comes to light, factually did not have. It, could, could you tell me it's a valid uh, uh, tefillah? It's not valid. He's Tommy. Like, is he Tommy today or is he Tor? It's definitely Tommy. He never immersed himself in a, in a valid mikvah. So therefore, they're, they're comparable. That, that's Tosa's question. Are they both Xeris Hakosos? Both Xeris Hakosos. Yes, the both are psychosis. That the moon, the, the differentiate between the two of them. Well, seemingly, then they're not comparable whatsoever, right? Because everybody would agree. Let, let's say they measured it's not it's deficient, and a third party wasn't aware of this fact that they measured it again. It wasn't. He went to the mikvah, and later you inform it because, by the way, you know we measured it when you went in. It definitely didn't have forty. So he says, well, but I wasn't aware of it. Doesn't make a difference whether you were or not. You, you factually were told in the mikvah right. that didn't have 40 sots. It's not a mikvah. Right. So he's still definitely his tummy. So if that's the fact, so what are you comparing this to Ben Grusha Ben Chalutza? It has no relevance to Ben Grusha Ben Chalutza. Why? Because there's this Gzer Sakosu. That if, if you're unaware when he does the avoda and it comes to light later, the avoda is valid. Gzer Sakosu. That's the exception. Yeah, a person eats non kosher meat. What? No, the Gemara, no. But again, a person eats meat that's not kosher. I thought it was kosher. Later, it's revealed to me it wasn't kosher. Did you kosher or not eat kosher? Well, it had 16 hechsherim. That doesn't make it kosher. The question was it kosher or wasn't it kosher? No, because you would think maybe the mum should be similar to the Maybe regarding, regarding avoda in the Beis Amigdosh, maybe something that comes to light later should not disqualify the coin. The coin's a voter. Maybe I should draw an analogy from, uh, from Bangrush Ben Chalutza, because that has to do with a voter. The answer is no. It, that is the exception. That is. And Mum, factually, if he wasn't qualified, he wasn't qualified. With the friendship between the Mum disqualification and Bangrusha disqualification. Invalid. Definitely invalid. Okay, so we'll see. So now they, they're discussing... What is the case of mikvah? We'll, we'll see tosis more comparable to. Is it more comparable to A or is it more comparable to B? So Rabbi Kiva says this is comparable to the case of mum, and therefore, therefore the tefillah is not. The tefillah is not a valid tefillah. Okay, so let's see. Rav is quoting all this to prove his point that when an erechot comes and says zin so ishtra that your wife committed adultery, and he remains silent, it means nothing. Right? That's where we're getting involved in all this. 
is it has to do with the dialogue between Reb Kiva and Reb Tarfin to differentiate between the cases. Is it more comparable to A or is it more comparable to B? Okay? Om Reb Tarfin, Ato di Miso le Balmum. Reb Tarfin says, you compare the case of Mikvah to the Balmum. Vani di Miso le Ben Grushim and And I compare it to Ben Grushim and Chalutso. And therefore, the Taros of what are not contaminated. Nira le Midome. Idome le Ben Grushim and Chalutso. If it's comparable to Ben Grusha, then we'll give it the same status Ben Grusha and Chalutso, and that means that things they're not contaminated. Im dome le Balmum, the dome le Balmum. Hischol Rebbe Akiva Lodo. He begins deliberating over here. Mikvah psulo biochid. Okay. Let's say Neid Echot comes and says the mikvah is posul. Do you believe him? You have a question. Is the mikvah kosher or not kosher? Mikvah says this mikvah is not kosher. You believe him? What? Psulo. Its invalidation comes through the testimony. Comes to the testimony of an individual, single witness. Let's say an individual comes, a single witness says, so and so when he did the avoda. He was a Balmum. Let's say he himself didn't realize he had a blemish. Didn't realize. He didn't have this defect. Adak comes says so and so had a, a defect when he did the Avoda. He's not he's believed. So I'll say Adachot. Because the only time Adachot's not believed it's it's a double shabarva. It's changed the status where it has to do with marital status. Married woman, divorced woman, right? Ben Grusham and Chalutza. What is his status? Who did your father marry? If a, person, a single witness would come and say, so and so is Ben Grusha Ben Chalutza, he's not believed. His disqualification is only if you have two witnesses testifying that his father married a Grusha, right? The Mishnah in Makos, right? Kashazoma. Two witnesses come and testify Ben Grusha Ben Chalutza, then they're found to be conspiring, right? We don't make them Ben Grusha Ben Chalutza, but you get Malchus. Because you need two witnesses. Anything less than two, not believed. That's firstly. That's the difference. We have mikvah, mikvah. You're able to invalidate with the testimony of a single witness. Balmum, a single witness. And the mik and Ben Grusha you need two. Okay? So we find that Balmum and mikvah are on par. It's eight, eight echot. Ben Grusha you need two. Dover Acher, another. Of course, it's a double shabarva. Of course, one has to do with marital status. Who, the, which woman did his father marry? Did, she ma did he marry a woman that was permitted to him or not a woman? Her? That's double shabarva. Anything to do with marital status, that the Torah says you need two witnesses. Monetary or mar marital status. Anything outside of that, a single witness is believed. That's eight echon then be suing. Provisions. Permitted, not permitted. Right, co correct, correct, correct. No. No, no. Okay, okay. You got to speak to to uh, okay. He took Diktuk in sixth grade. Okay, okay. Come on, we joke. Okay, okay. Sulo. No. Sulo begufo. Okay. Also, we should say begufo. Balmum sulo. Wait a minute. Mikvah psulo begufo. Now, why is what invalidates the mikvah? Of course, there's a deficiency in the mikvah itself. Correct. Balmum psulo begufo. Why is he disqualified? Because he has in his in his physical being he has a defect. Bal yocher ben grusha ben chalutzo. Ben chalutzo ben grusha ben chalutzo. What is the basis of the disqualification? Is there something inherent in him, or it's something which preceded him? It's how we came about. Because his father married a woman who was a Grusha, who wasn't really permitted to him. So that's Psulub Acherim. So we find this common ground on two levels. Eirech and Bishurim for Mikvah, to disqualify, invalidate the Mikvah, and to, to disqualify the Kohen. That's Eirech. Mikvah, Ben Grusha, you need two. In addition, 
One is inherent in the person. The def- it's a defect in the mikvah. It's a defect in the person. Deficient. The other is me'achirin. Therefore, if you're going to compare it, the case of mikvah is more comparable to the balmum and not to the ben grusha and chavutza. Omali reptarfin, akiva. Reptarfin was the rebbe of the rebbe of the Akiva. Says, akiva. Kol ha-perish mimcha ki-perish min ha-chayim. Separating from you is like separating from life. This is what he says to, to Rabbi Akiva. Okay? Definitely. That's what he's saying. He says, I agree with you. you the, it's clear. The distinction is, is clear. It's only comparable to that and not compared. To my analogy is not a correct analogy. Okay? Hide now. Let's talk now. Hide Balmum. Now, when it says a single witness is able to disqualify the coin by saying it's a Balmum, what is the case speaking about? Hai bal mum shib sula biyochet hechi dami. Person comes and says, Kohen so and so, he had a defect when he did the avoda. Right? And let's say the defect was always there. It was always there. Type of defect. Idu komachil shleimim nehemen. Is the Kohen countering the testimony of the single witness? She says, if he's countering him, why is the single witness believed? He's not believed. Right? person says to somebody, says something, Eid Echod. Eid Echod against an Eid Echod. Even though he's the, he's the, he's the Baldover, he's, he's able to counter it. Right? Two witnesses, you can't counter two witnesses. Wait a second, wait, before you ask the question, I'll check it. Okay? He doesn't, you don't have to check. I counter him. We don't say, go check. No, we're talking about it's a defect that if it's there, it was always there. What? None of your business. I say I don't have. Yeah, you know, suddenly I'll say, no, wait a sec, wait a sec. I say, you know, Ernie, are you wearing a pair of tzitzis? You say yes. You know, Sam, let's check. Oh, pick up your shirt. What do you mean, pick up your shirt? You, if I say I'm wearing, I'm wearing. It's none of your business. What I'm wearing at that. I have credibility. It does affect. He has credibility. Eid Echot. Eid Echot is only until you have a question, there is no question. Right? Until. Every human being has a cheskis. He's not, he, he's not a defective person. You, you're, you want to introduce a piece of information. There's no basis for, for even for the, con- for the concern. Why? Because the man says he's, 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 he's rebuffing your, your point. He's responding to your point. It's not a suffix. It's not a suffix. It's not a suffix. The tray or tray, there's a question, right? We spoke. If you have two against two, maybe there's a question. One against one is not, it's nothing. It's not a change of status. But it's a surin, no, no, it's not, it's not a marital issue. It's regarding iser. Are you qualified to be the coin? Not qualified to be the only coin. Right? That's erechon nem bi surin. If I say, uh, if I say the meat is kosher, somebody else says the meat is not kosher. Right? And the person is a credible person. Somebody comes to someone's house, he says, is the food kosher? And there's, there's a, some kind of other guest, he says, it, well, it's not kosher enough. You don't pay attention to the meat. You don't want to eat? Don't eat here. But every other person, based on the testimony of the host, they're permitted to eat there, without a question. And his comment is totally dismissed. Not even to be considered. Okay? And that's what Reb Kibbe says. says seemingly, what do we speak? Rubber says, what are we speaking about? If he counters the testimony of the single witness, we do we even consider the statement of the single witness? Ella the Shosik. So what is he about? He remains silent. And Eid Echot says, he's a Balmum. He has a defect, and the Kohen remains silent. So what do you see over there? Since Eid Echot and Surian, we, we say, Shtika Kodo. That's when we say, Shtika Kodo, as we discussed earlier. Udekavosik, Abbe Megrush, Mechalutza, said cases. But Ben Grush and Chalutza, what did we say? Both Ratarf and Rakiv agree that what? Two witnesses come and they say he's Ben Grusha Machlutza. What is his reaction? See, it's the same thing with differentiating. Defect, Erechon and Bisur. What's the context of Erechon and Bisur? He remains silent. So, what's the context of Ben Grusha Machlutza? Well, you need two to establish. He's also remained silent. So, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference. We're speaking, it's the same case. So, it was speaking, he remained silent in the context. Of two. Since Ben Grush Mechlutz is Dov Shebe Ervo, 
So when the when he's remaining silent, so we'll see in a moment. Because if we're saying, as as Abayi says, then Chalutzes then Grusha and Chalutza, when you're silent, even a single witness is enough. So what what why did they say Ben Grusha and Chalutza speaking with the two witnesses? Right before Abayi says, if a single witness says comes and says your wife committed adultery, and you remain silent, what's the status of the wife? She's not permitted to. So okay, so what is what do we have to say Ben Grusha and Chalutza? Where he's disqualified, if he remains silent, what do you mean you need two witnesses? According to Abai, one witness is sufficient. Abai, Reb Tarfin, Reb Kiva says, Ben Grush Machalutz, you need two witnesses. Correct? Yeah. What do you need two witnesses? If it's a case where he remains silent, even even Dov a single witness is enough. According to Abai. So evidently, if he's speaking, even when you remain silent, the only way you can be disqualified is you have to have two witnesses. So similarly, Two witnesses says your wife committed adultery. And the silence is totally irrelevant because you have two witnesses. But if silence is relevant, when you have a single witness, so what, is, what do we have to say, Ben Grusha Ben Chalutza? Is speaking, mm -hmm. well, you have two, even one. But both Reb Kiva and Reb Tavrin both agree. The only way he's disqualified, you have to have two witnesses. So clearly, it's a proof to have Rava that Shtiko Do, we don't say, unless you have two. Right? One witness means nothing. On his position, Uktani mikvah psula biyochid, bal mul psula biyochid, and what Reb Kiva and both Reb Tafin they concurred that disqualification of the mikvah or the individual, a single witness is, is sufficient. Bal yochir ben grush ben chalutza, and the only way he could be disqualified as a cholol, as a non-qualified kohen, bishnayim. But according to Abayi, what do you need? If it's Shosak, if you remain silent, a single witness should be sufficient. It's evident you see that even when you're silent, Adav should be erva. We we don't give any credibility to the statement of the single witness. Okay. So how does Abayi re respond? Okay, this is what Ernie said. Okay, Abayi on the olam de Factually, the person, the Kohen, is countering the testimony of the single witness, countering it. With the comment that my man, she say, we, we, we don't need give any credibility to the statement of the Eid Echod if you counter him. If I say the meat is kosher, Eid Echod says it's not kosher. You to totally ignore the statement, the testimony of the Eid Echod, correct? By meat. So that, that's what we went on. If it's Eid Echod and Bisurin, we shouldn't even consider the statement of the other Kohen, of the, other, of the single witness. So Rabbi says, no, this is different. <coughs> Amrab, I'm I'm Mehemet. The Amale Shlach Achvi. You know what the Kohen says? Remove my clothing, and that will prove the case. Because this is verifiable. If the meat is kosher or not, there's no way to verify that. I say the meat is kosher. You say it's not kosher. Okay? It's not verifiable. Therefore, we don't give any any credibility to the statement of the of, of the Eid Echod if he's counted by the other party. Right? He rejects what he says. If it's irresolvable. But here, you can. You could, you, you could, could actually verify the fact. The, what the witness is saying is it credible or is not credible. Take off his clothing. By taking off his clothing, you'll be able to verify whether he has the, the defect or not. So we'll see those in a moment. Now, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Once discussed, there's, there's a discussion. If you have, you know, the Mishnah says in, in Chulim, here, that an animal can be found to be a trefa in 18 locations in its body. In Yudches trefos. And it goes to, goes to identify where these defects in, in the animal is, whether it's a perforated stomach, a hole in the heart, uh, the brain is pierced, whatever it may be, water on the brain, certain uh, veins are cut at a certain location, the animal's is rendered traitor. Okay? Now, so the Ran in Kulin asked sites of the Rif, Rabbi Noaltis. Now, the Gemara says that if you find meat in the street and it seems to be, and you see the meat, and it's the animal's intact and it's cut, its throat is cut as if Shechita was done, are you permitted to eat the meat? So the Gemara says you're permitted to eat the meat. 
Why you permitted to eat the meat? Because no mitsuyates are shkita mumchadeh. Because the majority of ritual slaughterers, they're experts. Because even a person does shkita, if you're not an expert, there are five things which can invalidate the shkita. But so the question is, did an expert do this? Or maybe a person was a novice. So since we have a rove, rove mitsuyates are shkita mumchadeh, so we follow rove. Correct. That, that's exactly what the words mean. Rov mitzuyinet zoshchita mumchem. The majority of people do ritual slaughter. They're experts. So in that case, I have a right to rely on rov that they want that the animal was slaughtered properly. Therefore, the meat is considered kosher. That's the Gemara. So the Rif writes in the Chuvo. Now, the Rif writes. Let's see if a person presents himself as a shofit. And but you're able to examine him. And ask him questions, and to sh- ask him, could you prove that you're an expert? Do you have to go through that process to establish him the expert, or do I have a right to rely on rove? That's the question. This is called a rove with Efshe Levrure. You're able to verify the fact without relying on rove. Do I have a responsibility to verify it? That's the discussion of the riff. It's a chuva. It's a response of the riff. So the riff rules that the only time you rely on rove if it's if something which cannot be very you find the meat, you don't you have no idea who slaughtered it. So as a result of that, you have a right to rely on rope. Tor says if you have an irresolvable question, yet you can rely on certain things. You can rely on rope, you can rely on chazoka, but if you're able to verify it, so the way it's explained, because it's not a suffix. A suffix, a question is only a question if it's never not verifiable. But if you can verify the fact, it's not a question. Go investigate. You'll know exactly what it is. It's A or B. It's not, it's not a question. So therefore, you have no right to rely on rope. So the riff rules that if the person who did the shechita is in the, in the community and you're able to summon him and to ask him questions and to examine him to see whether he's proficient, he's the expert, you cannot eat the meat until he's been examined. Mm-hmm. But if he's not in town mm-hmm. and you're not able to summon him, then you're permitted to eat the meat. Wait. Forget about the glot. Let's, let's do what the glot in the mind. Okay, let's talk about this. So the Rib, so the Ran asks a question. It says, you have Yudches Trefos. You have 18 areas of the animal where the animal could be rendered a Trefo. Why don't we only check the, the lung? The only thing we check in an animal when you slaughter, they check the lung. They don't check the stomach. They don't check the brain. They don't check all these other areas. Why do they only check the lung? Okay, that's, that's the Ran's question. Why do you rely on Yeah, it's, it's after the You're able to verify it. Okay, so the right answer is that when they, after the shechita, when they dismember the animal, the first thing that comes out, which is easily available and easily checked, is the lung is the first thing that comes out. So because it's an immediately available to be checked, so not checking, it's like turning, turning a blind eye. But the other areas, which are so difficult to check, we don't classify that as verifiable. That's, that's the run's differentiation. The lung, which can easily be, vi- be verified because it's right before you, it's like you're just turning a blind eye on it. So it's before you. Just look, and you'll see whether it is or whether it's not, whether it has the perforation or not. The other area is much more complicated. That's not cla- classified as Efshe Lavuri. Same point, by the time you get it out, either it's been hit by something else, or you don't know what it was. The time no, no, no. The because of the level of difficulty, you, have no, you don't have to turn mountains. To, to verify, but the Torah says that's sufficient. That's sufficient to consider it a sophic. Something which is before your eye, you just have to look. That's not a sophic. But something where you have to make an effort to de- make the determination that co- that's sufficient to be classified as a sophic. And the Torah says if it is a bona fide sophic, you have a right to rely on rove or chazaka. That's 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 the ron. That's how the ron differentiates between checking the lung and checking the, checking the other areas of the animal. Okay, that's the, that. Okay. So now, we have, it's interesting, the, um, we had a case, now, there's a question, the Gemara says a chulin, that if you have um, m- meat, milk falling to a meat pot, so if you have shishim, you have 60 in the volume of the meat versus the droplet of milk that falls on the meat, you're permitted to eat the meat. It's cooking in a pot, tipas chosh noflo al chatichas right, it's a mishnah. A drop, this, this, this case we're talking about, 
years ago, there was a certain person who used to attend Yad Avram. Passed away, be in his 90s today. So before the war, he learned Yeshiva. So whenever we, we and we learn a chul and then, so tipas chol shnaf lachikiv as bossy. He says, that was my bar mitzvah joshua. That's what he used to say. <laughs> okay. So the Mishnah says, if you have a piece, of, a droplet of milk that falls on a piece of meat, so if the shishim, if there's, there's a ratio of 60 to 1, you're permitted to eat the meat. But if it's less, you're not permitted to eat. So the Mechabri, Shulchan Aruch, speaks about a case. So the Gemara speaks about a case. Let's say you're not sure. You're not sure if there's 60 or not 60. And what, what do you need 60? Let's say the ratio is 40 to 1. It's possible 40 to 1. Maybe you won't taste the milk in the meat. See, 60 is the level of dilution. There's no question. You will not taste the milk in the meat. But it's possible less. So if you, this is the way Rashi learns. So you, what do you do? You get a kefela. You get an expert taster, a person who has professional taste buds, and you ask him, could you please taste the meat? Well, you have to be a goy. Of course you have to be a goy. Good. Very good. He has to be a non-Jew. No. So he has to, he has to be a non-Jew. So the question is, no. A, 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 a non-Jew has no, no belief. You don't, you don't rely on him, but it says, it's called Timas Kfeila. You ask a Kfeila, this expert taste it, taste it, and he tell, tells you, and you ask him in a way where he doesn't know when, why you're asking him for halachic reasons. He says, by the way, it tastes off. Does it taste off or not? It does taste perfect. Otherwise, he would tell you if it has a certain taste of milk. He would say something. If he doesn't say that, you're permitted to eat it even if it's less than 60 to 1. Okay? That's the, that's the way some. Other Rishonim says no. Of course, even when you have 60 to 1, it's possible, yes, no, whatever. It is. But the Mechaber rules like this. We rule Tom Kater. That when you taste something, absorb in something else, although you can't locate the source of the taste, the taste is equivalent of the essence of the Yisr. Right? So the Mechaber, and the Mechaber says, Normally, you have to have shishim. Let's say you have chelev, not kosher fat. Mixes it into a food. So it's called minda inomino. And you, you, you question where you have, where they have shishim. What do you do? You ask a goy. You ask a non-Jew to taste it. If he tells he tastes chelev, then you're not. If he says he doesn't, then you're permitted. So the shach and taz both ask. But Erechem M.B. Surin is only a Jew. How do we believe a goy? Tom Kik is nis doraiso. Rabbinically, only on a rabbinic law do we rely on a non-Jew. On a Torah law, we don't rely on the testimony of a non-Jew. So how do you rely on the, his tasting? If Tom Kik is Doraiso, how do you rely on Timas Kfeilo on the tasting of the, of the expert non-Jew if he has no credibility whatsoever? So that's the Shach and Taz, Taz's question. They're the primary commentators on the Shulchan Aruch. They both answer, of course, this is Milsa David Gluz Lashakri Yishi. Something which will be revealed, the person doesn't lie. You know, this guy doesn't want to be caught in a lie. He tells it tastes perfect. Doesn't taste mechelo. Doesn't taste the milk. When you eat it, you're going to know whether it tastes from the, whether you taste the milk or you taste the, the fat. And the non-Jew understands. He's asking because you want to eat it. So if he's going to be caught in a lie, we could say with certainty a man doesn't lie. So it's not his credibility. Of course, he has to be credible that he has professional taste buds. But, but even if he has, maybe he's lying. Maybe he's lying. The answer is no, because we would say with certainty he's not lying, because nobody wants to be caught in a lie, and he has to be caught in a lie. That's Nilsen Avidu Glui Lo A person doesn't lie. No, I'm not talking about whatever it is. I'm not getting there. Any human being, any person who has any sense of, of what, of decency, of you want to be seen as, a, as an upright person, he's not going to put, him, put himself in a compromised position. He's definitely gonna get caught here, right? Over here. That's what Abai is saying. Wait one second. Wait. So Abai is saying over here, the Kohen is countering. He says if the Kohen counters the Eid of course we don't e give any consideration to the Eid Echod. Mar says no. You can say Shlach, remove your garment. We'll, we'll prove it. Right? Normally, what's the basis for Eid Echod and Bisurim? Torah says you believe in Eid Echod. So if the Eid Echod is countered, you dismiss him. But over here, what the Eidoch is saying, we're able to verify what he's saying, whether, it has whether it's credible or not. Remove your shirt, and we'll see whether you have the defect or not. Therefore, that gives him, it's more than just Eidoch and Nembi Surim. That the Torah is just relying on his testimony. It's, it could be verified. 
So factually, his testimony could be actually verified whether it has what it's credit, credible. Or, therefore, this will be the exception, exception if you don't dismiss it. Could be the same reason. You know, if, because, you know, a child takes a stone, throws it through the window. So the parent says to the child, "Why did you throw it?" He says, "I wasn't thinking." Okay, that's the difference between a child and an adult. An adult, we say. A person who's an adult, he has a level of responsibility. The child has no. A woman definitely won't be. If anywhere, a woman's belief. Anyway, we say, a woman's belief. Right? You discuss it with Andrew. He liked that story. You can discuss it with him. Okay. I know the story. It was a story I told over Rav Shmuel Salant. Rav Shmuel Salant. The Mechaber rules that today we rely on Timas Kfeva. Even today. Okay? And it has relevance to us. That if you ask a Nanju to taste whether the milk, he takes milk or not, we rely on Ramos says today we don't rely on, on the testimony of the Nanju. Even the expert. So the Shach and the Ramos says, but it has relevance to us. Even though we don't rely on the testimony of a expert Nanju, but if you have a sophic, whether the shishim or not, you can rely on somebody there. What's the case? The person makes a netter. He's not going to eat a certain type of food. And that food now intermingles in other food. So the person made the netter. If the shishim, then he's permitted to eat it. But he doesn't know whether the shishim. So you can ask another Jew to taste it on his behalf. Because the other Jew, right, he didn't make a netter. And a Jew is credible. So Ramos says, although we don't rely on the tasting of a non-Jew, but a Jew we would rely on. Okay, that's that. So the story, but Mechaber rules, so the, the story of Shmuel Salant was the Rav Yerushalayim, the end of the 19th century, early part of the 20th century. And people literally, barely made ends meet, barely. And there was a wedding, and they were serving chicken, you know, wings and, and uh, drumsticks, that's it, and, and polkas, that's it. And accidentally, some milk splashed into the pot. That's the end of the wedding, you know. There's no way. They, they, ra they saved money for years to, to, to afford to have the chicken. So, and they're not sure. Is the shishim? Is not shishim. What do you do? Right? Everybody, right? The Ramah says, we can't rely on Timas Kvela. Can't rely on the tasting of a goy. So they want to ask the shop of Rav Maybe he'll come up with a solution. He says, no problem. Get a Sephardi. Let him taste the meat. Because according to the Mechaba, you rely on, 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 on a Timas Kvela. So if a non-Jew says he doesn't taste the milk, the Sephardi is permitted to eat it. So if now if the Sephardi eats it, he says, don't taste some milk, now you can rely on him. He's credible. And that's how we've permitted the meat. <laughs> 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 <laughs>